super important session that we have today. Super important because we are talking about countries and about our work in countries and strategic priorities in countries. And we are delighted to have you all join us here for the launch new series on health systems in action insights here at the regional committee meeting. So my name is uh, Gundo Weiler and uh, I'm director for country support at the regional office in Europe in Copenhagen and I will uh, lead us today through the session. Let me just say from the outset that of course uh, our regional director Dr. Hans Kluge wanted to be here as this uh, series is very dear to his heart. He is actually the one who suggested it in the first place because he uh, was very eager to ensure that we've got uh, also the uh, countries covered with such uh, reports that are not members of the European Union, uh, for which already we have a very successful series that you're probably all aware of, the country health profiles. And so he very much suggested that, and this is kind of also his baby. So, so he can't make it today because he's in the ministerial lunch, um, but uh, we're happy that all you made it. And we have a super high powered uh, panel here with us. And we've got the most high powered and the most famous person of the regional committee with us, Minister Horowitz. If I can ask you to come forward, we don't have a nameplate for you because you're the only one who doesn't need one, uh, because everybody knows you. But maybe I can ask you to just say a few opening words for us. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so, uh, Your Excellencies, friends, and colleagues, uh, I'm so happy to be here at the launch of the Insight series. The series gives us a concise and standardized, standardized, yeah, excuse my English, way to compare our health systems. I see great um, importance in international collaborations on a ministerial level. Our health professionals, headed by Professor Ash here, and officials will benefit immensely from uh, understanding which other countries face similar challenges. And it is a wonderful map to discover best practices and learn from them. Now, it's definitely useful for me personally to prepare for our various bilateral meetings here this week and throughout the year. I hope you will uh, take the time to look over the Israeli report, and I'm sure you will find the Director General Ash's presentation on the benefits and challenges of our healthcare system fast. So you should, uh, you should not disappoint me. Thank you and please uh, take advantage of your time here to build bridges with the representatives of the Israeli health system. We are always eager for new collaboration, both to learn from and to share experience with our friends. Thank you so much and have a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for welcoming us to this uh, important session and important launch here. As I've said, we have got a high-powered panel here with us. We've got a first deputy minister, a state secretary, director general uh, of uh, health and head of international health, but we will introduce you as we go along. So because uh, we have a lot of ground to cover here in fairly short period of time, and we want to get uh, well to the, ses to the session. Now, let me maybe uh, just also acknowledge the other participants who will introduce themselves, which include, of course, our colleagues from WHO and, importantly, our colleagues from the uh, observatory uh, who've been behind the publications. Uh, so, Joseph and, and Susie, great uh, to, to have you here and for pulling this event off. And most importantly, you are in the room. So, thanks for, for making it for, for this lunchtime session. As, um, uh, when our regional director initially commissioned the series and initiated the series, there was one thing that he really is that this is, shouldn't just be paper, but it should be useful. Useful of all what is happening in countries, how uh, countries can think about their own strategic priorities and how we as uh, development partners can support countries in pursuing them. So uh, to start off with, I would like to ask um, David uh, Novillo, who is from the Division of Health Country, of Country Health Policies and Systems at the regional office to give us a bit of an overview of what this animal is about and already starting for us to, to indicate how that can be useful to all of us and all of you. David, the floor is yours. Thank you, Gundo. Good afternoon, hey, colleagues. Uh, it's a bit intimidating to speak on behalf of our regional director, uh, but I know that he's very excited 
about this series that which is in many ways his baby. I am also standing here um, for Natasha Sopardi Muscat, uh, the director for health, um, country health policies and systems. So I have a doubly difficult task. And Natasha will have love, of course, to be here and work really hard to make it happen because she believes in the insights and in our strong collaboration with our dear colleagues in the observatory. Because this is about data and health information, that is my technical hat. Uh, I was told to follow a script, so that is the reason I will ensure that it will be quite brief. Um, we are all very proud of what we have achieved so far, a set of descriptions of 14 non-EU country health systems that allow readers to a health system in 30 minutes. You may ask why anyone will try to grab a whole system in under an hour. But we know decision makers are inundated with information and with detail. So there is real value in helping them step back, take an overview. Next slide, please. Um, we know that ministers of health outside the EU, and of course within it, need to capture the complexity of health systems and the links across areas, both internally. So there is a clear common understanding within and across departments and for wider communication and convincing other ministers like finance that investing in health systems is worthwhile means being able to make a case quickly and concisely. It means pulling out successes and challenges and showing how a country compares to its peers. It is also useful to be to be able to explain what is happening in practice to outsiders, whether they are consultants, EU colleagues, or development partners. The regional director wanted to allow all the, regional, the region's policymakers this immediate access to the evidence by providing a standard, concise, clear, trustworthy summary that is easy to navigate and which is updated regularly to give the long view. The Division of Country Health Policies and Systems that I am pleased to, to represent today has been really happy to respond with our real colleagues in the European Observatory on Health Systems and Policies. And thank you so much to Susie, Joseph, and the great team that this, uh, this has been working on this. Um, we have produced the insights, and here we must acknowledge the inspiring of state of health in the EU country profiles, so that in just 15 pages, you can grasp the state of play in non-EU member states. We have also included a spotlight to highlight a topical issue, the pilot series focus on COVID. This year, we were lucky enough to work with the Division of Country Health Programs and on AMR, and we'll hear from, from Dr. Versulli, the director of this division. Finally, I just wanted to mention the European program of work. As you know, we are working hard on indicators of success uh, for the EPW. The insights will set the data in a health systems context and help ensure the work to capture progress will be meaningful to member states. We are convinced the insights will be useful in many ways and are proud of their development. We hope this session and the contributions from the speakers will lead you to agree that this is a tool for all countries and one that you will use. We also hope that you will agree it this and we should continue to span and update. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, David. And yeah, definitely. Uh, this is quite something 30 minutes to read the document and to get orientation of a health system. And we all know that the briefer we want to be, the more to prepare such and uh, really testifies to the huge effort that went into this. Now, this is 30 minutes to, to read the document. And now in the next segment, we have uh, got, got the privilege to have Professor Ash with us, uh, who will explain in four minutes uh, how the uh, Israeli health system uh, is represented in the document and to share some thoughts. So over to you with a very special challenge. And thank you for joining us, Professor Ash. So uh, thank you very much, and I'm really happy and honored to be the first country that present the insight. And uh, I, I, I strong, strongly believe that uh, uh, this program will help us, all countries, to understand better 
uh, the, what other countries do, how they do that. And uh, we learn a lot much early. The Israeli insight summarizes the functions of the healthcare system and its uh, uniqueness. And I'll describe the strengths and the weaknesses in four minutes. And uh, I highlight the priority areas for policy. And next slide, please. Uh, the Israeli healthcare system provides universal healthcare uh, coverage in uh, three aspects. Uh, the first one is uh, nationally health insurance that covers all residents in Israel. The second one is the basket of publicly financed services that are provided and paid uh, through four uh, com uh, competing health plans. The basket is broad and it allows residents access rights to comprehensive services and technologies. And the third aspect is that the national health insurance also covers almost all costs of services with small co-payments. One of the key insights is that the relatively low public share of health spending compared to similar countries as a percent, percent of the GDP, GDP the per capita. So uh, the insight also shows the uh, private funding through voluntary health insurance. And actually 82% of the adults in Israel have some kind of a voluntary health insurance on top of the national health insurance. And actually half of the population owns two uh, types of uh, voluntary health insurance. We have one that is provided by the health plans and second one that is provided by uh, private uh, insurance companies. So this reflects, uh, to our opinion, the worries of the population about the access to health services and uh, also uh, the need to choose uh, a surgeon in a, uh, which is limited in the public sector. Other things that the waiting times to different services, mainly secondary care may be long. And they're also concerned about the care in the periphery of Israel, which, is, uh, which has less workforce and less infrastructure. And we know that low-income people sometimes forgo care due to cost. So I described health system that uh, has a national health insurance for heavy, everybody almost for free, but on the other hand, the public uh, wants more and therefore goes to voluntary health insurance as well. Uh, next slide, please. The insight uh, captured the strengths of the Israeli primary care, we, uh, which we hope uh, can inspire other countries. Uh, the primary care services are supported by comprehensive digital services that were deployed by the health plans uh, through the year. Electronic records are with us for 30 years and uh, they enable integrated care, patient empowerment and research. Uh, another strength is that 63% of uh, adult patients in Israel report a GP coordinating their care. Of course, we want it to be higher percentage, but it's quite nice. The primary care infrastructure and workforce uh, were keys to our coping with the COVID-19 pandemic and especially the, the fast, uh, fast vaccination rollout. The insight also demonstrate the low bed to population ratio, reflecting a long running government preference to move as much patient out of hospital to the community based uh, settings. And actually in 2019, the outpatient care was 47% of uh, current health expenditure, while the European average is uh, around 26%. Yet, inpatient should be strengthened with focus on intensive care beds, again, as learned from the COVID-19 pandemic. Public health uh, should be promoted and disparities uh, reduced as uh, Many of the, uh, we face obesity and diabetes, which are a growing concern in the population, especially in low in 
low in income ones. Quality of care is high and promoted by transparent monitoring, both in the community care and in hospitals. Uh, however, we need to strengthen preventive care and healthy behaviors among minority populations. Last slide. Uh, in this slide, uh, I would like to uh, focus on certain policies that further improve the performance of the Israeli healthcare system. Uh, four key issues. One is expanding, diversifying, and regulating the cadre of health workers to ensure uh, quality. We must increase the capacity to train more doctors and nurses in Israel. The second one is ensure financial stability of hospitals and health plans and improve costs and prices. The third one is, if, is to further develop mental health care uh, outpatient services, availability, increasing inpatient staffing, stigma, increasing the number of psychiatrists and improving integrated care. And the last one is uh, regulating private healthcare provision uh, and funding to address the inefficiencies uh, in, in the system. And I'm leading such a committee that uh, uh, dealing with the regulation of the public and private sectors to find the, the better way to do that. We want to reduce the disparities based on ownership of uh, voluntary health insurance and reduce negative spillovers to the public health system. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Ash and uh... Indeed, that was a real uh, speed dating with the Israeli health system and you did, you did excellently so. And for those who are now more curious, uh, there's the 30-minute 30, uh, 30 version of that also available for all of you. Now, we will just step back a little bit. I'm sure you are quite curious about that series. And uh, I will now uh, ask two uh, colleagues to make a brief intervention. First, uh, Susie Lesov, who's with the observatory and who's been coordinating the development of this uh, series. And uh, she will give us a bit of an insight, how the inside series was put together. And then, uh, as you will note, the series, and that has been said before, always provides an opportunity to also highlight specific technical issues. And we've got with us today our technical director from the regional office, Beth Sudi, who's directing the uh, program, the Division of uh, Country Health Programs. And she will talk a little bit about one specific technical aspect that can be highlighted very well through this um, series. And, and you will learn about that in a couple of minutes. Susie, first you, and then Nina, over to you. Thank you, Kundo. And thank you, Director General, for setting out how the insight captured the big picture and key issues for Israel. Before we hear from Georgia, Montenegro, and Tajikistan, <laughs> thank you. I'd like to reflect very briefly on how we design the insights to support policymakers. With our colleagues in the Division of Country Health Policies and Systems, Natasha Azapadi Maskat, David, and his team, the observatory chose a structure that would foster stand. So each insight explains in a standard, consistent way how the health system is organized and paid for the services it delivers, and how resources are generated. Our colleagues in the WHO Barcelona Office for Health Systems Financing tackled how far the system protects the population financially. And we look at the system's impact on the ultimate goal, people's health. We've also placed a lot of emphasis on a comparative understanding. The insight will show you if life expectancy is better or worse in your country than in others, or how the numbers of hospital beds stack up, or whether public spending on health is rising or falling with time. We did this because we are because insights are meant to be used in practice. We see them as an entry point for discussion. So the standard structure and the signposting mean everyone can be on the same page on how things function and on what doesn't work. The comparative information allows health policymakers to ask why. Why other countries have a different ratio of doctors to nurses, why they rely less on out-of-pocket payments. The insights also allow achievements to be shared. So if investment has led to better coverage, everyone can acknowledge that. Having a single clear, concise and objective picture opens doors for debate and for action. Next slide, please. Ria. So far, we have 14 insights and we will expand the series to cover all non-EU countries. 
The series cannot, of course, tell a single story, but there are common themes. Public spending tends to be low and out-of-pocket payments high. Primary care is recognised as important, but all too often is not reflected in resource allocation. Workforce shortages affect many countries and data challenges are widespread. None of this is a surprise, but it does show how much member states still have to do and how many opportunities there are to share best practices and learn from each other. Next slide, please. The broad themes matter, but each insight is about one country and about entry points for supporting work in that country, whether on primary care or data or integration. Nonetheless, we do stress the wider European context because it's important and because of the power of looking across borders. Capturing underperformance in one country relative to another will motivate action. And evidence of progress over time reinforces ministry efforts. And we hope that the way the insights about the complexities of the health system and the interdependence of the various components will help encourage action that's truly joined up. Next slide, please. I'm not going to say much about how countries use insights. We're about to hear from three actual policymakers, but it's worth mentioning the experience of EU countries with their state of health country profiles. They were an inspiration for the insights series and ministries of health have used them to talk to ministries of finance, to ask finance colleagues why other countries spend more, to highlight room for improvement and to make the case for investment in health. We expect the insights to serve in a similar way. We hope, as David explained, that they will help countries to introduce themselves, understand themselves, and put progress with the EPW or their roadmap into context. We hope they'll allow policymakers to see easily what has worked and to share the lessons learned. And finally, as the insights roll forwards, and we will update them every other year from now on, each edition will explore a particular challenge. This year, as Gundo mentioned, we focused on AMR, and I'll now hand over to Dr. Nino Bazzuli, Director of Country Health Programmes, to hear how the insights have contributed to the work she's leading in her division. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Susie. Uh, and thanks to uh, my team, AMR team, uh, under the leadership of uh, Danilo Lofoblan for uh, putting the spotlight on the AMR. Uh, this uh, area of work is so close to me, to my heart, and also the, I see the big value, the huge value into the insights that, you know, I left the, the medicine session, the ministerial session early to be with you here. Um, so uh, it's, a, it's a great way, actually, to put, uh, um, again, to state how much uh, AMR matters, and this is a very good platform. Uh, to discuss again and to put the spotlight on AMR through the insight, uh, through the insights. Um, the, the the one there are a number of uh, challenges uh, that uh, insight uh, identifies uh, in terms of the in the context of the AMR, and one of the the biggest challenges that we are facing is uh, um, the availability of the data and the surveillance. Uh, the quality of the data, and this is uh, challenging actually to collect the quality data in, uh, in a number of countries. And there are, uh, as you know, the differences in terms of the um, antimicrobial consumption and antimicrobial resistance among the non EU member states. Um, so, uh, and without the data and without the surveillance, without information, it, is very, it will be very hard to uh, make the policy change and uh, for the decision to uh, put the policies uh, forward. This is the first step. Uh, the uh, investing in the pan-European uh, surveillance uh, uh, on our AMR consumption and AMR resistance is one of the, uh, the biggest uh, efforts that the regional office is undertaking. And the, the good news here, the good news is that we have more countries that are generating the data and the evidence on AMR. So the other challenge is, of course, the practice, the practice in terms of the AMR, uh, um, antimicrobial consumption and the antimicrobial resistance. And uh, these challenges, you know, of course, you know, comes in terms of the, uh, um, the staff training capacity of the staff, uh, uh, as well uh, as uh, the uh, stewardship aspect, as well as the literacy, health literacy and the public awareness in terms of the antimicrobial consumption. And of course, uh, the AMR in the context of the One Health approach, which is uh, becoming an increasingly important area. Next slide, please. 
Uh, the spotlight, uh, the, the AMR, uh, the inside series uh, are very helpful in terms of the putting AMR in the, the context of the whole systems. And here we have to emphasize the AMR. It's not a standalone uh, issue. It's a, it's, a, it's a complex issue. And the AMR also is linked to human, animal and environmental factors that affects uh, everyday life. Uh, and in this context, it is very important. And we'll go back again and link to the surveillance is also very important to do the surveillance, not only in humans, but also to do the surveillance in food chains, uh, to do surveillance, environmental surveillance. And we've heard from the regional director today how important to do the environmental surveillance in terms of the polio COVID. Equally, it is important also to do the uh, survey environmental surveillance for AMR in order to identify the emerging pathogens and the new AMR uh, genes. Um, and of course, uh, the AMR indicates the, the bigger health system failures, uh, uh, as well as the, the health literacy limitations in the population in terms of the antimicrobial uh, consumptions and the uh, lack of the political commitment to invest in AMR. Next slide. So I will finish with the with the, with this slide uh, that uh, the insights identify not only gaps and the challenges that uh, we are facing, but also identifies the, uh, um, the the critical factors, the response factors that we could put forward in order to tackle this uh, uh, important issue. Uh, we know that the COVID-19 was a huge challenge, uh, but also it shows that the, with the concerted action, the, the change is possible and uh, can countries get, uh, can get back on track. Um, the inside series demonstrate also that uh, uh, there is, uh, where are the, as I said, where are the gaps in terms of the national AMR responses, but also call for the actions. And within the, um, our team in the regional office are working uh, very closely with the member states, with the countries to identify those uh, gaps and uh, implement the country tailored uh, local solutions to the local challenges. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nino and uh, Susie for giving us an insight on how these uh, reports have been put together and uh, how they are actually uh, can be used as um, tools to promote change and highlighting specific uh, aspects such as AMR. So now we want to hear a little bit more from countries who've uh, also produced, in addition to Israel, other reports on insights, and we've got uh, three countries. And uh, I will actually use that opportunity to also acknowledge our colleagues from WHO at country level, in particular our WHO representatives who are working uh, very closely alongside countries, uh, not only in um, putting together the reports, but then also uh, using them as tools for change. And uh, I will give the floor to our country representatives to introduce then their colleagues from the ministries of health, who will then talk about the specific inside reports. And we've got uh, two WRs with us. So first, uh, Georgia Silvio Domenti, who will introduce a colleague. Then uh, we'll have also Viktor Olsavsky with us um, from Tajikistan, our uh, representative. And um, our colleague, WR from Montenegro, here today. But Susie will take over that, that role. She's in the ministerial session. So Silvio, over to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Gundo. Uh, hello, everybody. And it's a, it's a an honor for me to introduce Dr. Tamar Gabunye, first Deputy Minister, Ministry of Internally Displaced Persons from Occupied Territories, Labor, Health, and Social Affairs. It's a long name. It took me some time to learn how to correctly pronounce this name, but it's, it's, it's also a huge ministry with huge priorities and a huge ongoing reforms now initiated. And I'm very happy to introduce Tamar Gabunye. She's a medical doctor. She graduated from the DC State Medical University, and she got also a master in public health and management in at the University of Georgia in the United States. She started her professional career as a, at primary health care level, and she is still very passionate about primary health care and is a main promoter of primary health care reform in Georgia. So initially, she was director of the district uh, and clinical diagnostic uh, center. After accumulating a significant experience uh, to working at primary health care uh, level, community level, so she moved to the capital, to Tbilisi, and she became director of the National Family Medicine Training Center. Uh, this is a very strong institution. We still work with that institution now. 
and and of course uh, Tamar contributed to that. So uh, following that, so in, I, I'm if I'm not. 2009, I think Tamar Gabunia uh, joined the Ministry of Health. She was uh, heading the Department of uh, Sectoral Policies. But after that, she, she had uh, an opportunity to gain a, a lot of international experience and work on international projects as with international organizations, including the UN, USAID. And she provided expertise in various fields like HIV control, TB control, health systems, strengthening, malaria eradication, so very, very huge international experience, even working abroad in Cambodia and the, the malaria program and so on. In 2019, Tamar Gabunian came back to the ministry, becoming deputy minister of health and in, in a few months, so first deputy minister of health. For me personally, for our team, WHO team in Georgia, it's, it's a privilege to work uh, with Tamar Gabunia. Uh, she is not only first deputy minister, she is also WHO focal point. And recently, she is also acting general director of National Center of Public Health, uh, uh, National Center of Pub uh, Disease Control and Public Health. Uh, we have many initiatives uh, under our collaboration, and uh, Tamar Gabunia will talk only about one of them today. Sorry. Thank you. I saw you were starting jumping. <laughs> Not sure if this is working. Okay. Is it working? Okay, thank you, Sylvia. First of all, I would like to express my cordial uh, gratitude to the World Health Organization as well as its uh, country office for tremendous assistance. And again, I would like to highlight how important it is for us to have Georgia reflected in uh, this new insights. Uh, this is important for various reasons. Actually, in, uh, uh, let's say, 15 pages, it's uh, amazing how uh, well, the system is uh, described and all challenges we've been experiencing over the last several years outlined in, in the document. So it's very helpful to uh, make our story and to tell others about how can we improve the health system capacity to respond to various uh, needs. Uh, this uh, document highlights major areas which is uh, like important, which are all important to consider the health system as a whole. It talks about resor human resources, finances, governance, access to primary health care. Uh, I would like just to focus on uh, various points reflected in, in, in the inside document about primary health care reform. So as mentioned by Silvio, Georgia made several attempts to reform its primary health care. Like over the, over the last 30 years, I've personally been part of various uh, reform initiatives. However, each time reforms were aimed at uh, one, two, or maybe three specific directions without clear linkages in between those and without linking primary health care to the rest of the health system. So that's why it's very important now to address this uh, challenge and consider primary health care reform as part of the overall health system, system reform and health system strengthening interventions. That's why we do really appreciate it, seeing in the insights, major uh, areas we've been trying to address for strengthening primary health care. This in includes uh, addressing human resource shortage at primary health care, addressing non-communicable uh, conditions and burden related to non-communicable conditions, uh, as well as improving access to life-saving drugs. Um, of course, it's very important that insights are based on available data and helps to interpret and analyze the data. Here on the slide, you can see several graphs which illustrate that these data are, are presented in a very simple, easily understandable manner and allows for comparison across countries and facilitates decision-making. This is very important. Next slide, please. Uh, it, it's also, uh, the, along with challenges, insights talk about progress, and this is also very important to see what worked well, 
uh, and um, uh, tuberculosis is one of the example where Georgia has made a very good progress, and this is also highlighted in the insights uh, documents. The insight sets out the health system contexts. Uh, connections are described in a very clear manner. And uh, this is really helpful to plan next steps and present very clear outline for our reforms. For instance, for primary health care, of course, our focus is to eliminate inequity in access and quality. And we've been working very hard to introduce new tools and uh, train people to chronic disease management drugs, as you can see, uh, non-communicable conditions still compose the biggest burden in Georgia in relation to morbidity and mortality. We've been working on introducing clinical care pathways to improve managing hypertension, which could then uh, lead to stroke and many other clinical complications. And the intention is to improve the patient experience and case management across different levels of care. And we have a very good partnership with the World Bank in relation to these initiatives. Um, and another important di direction is to introduce telemedicine, which is an innovative approach. And this is another way for us to improve access to health services, as well as um, to you know, make sure that people living in remote areas can have easy access to specialized consultations. So in conclusion, I would like to emphasize again that Georgia understands how important it is to uh, develop primary health care and the primary health care is deeply embedded in the health system as a whole and cannot be treated as a separate program. Staffing and payment, integration and impact of NCDs, access to medicine and financial protection all are key strategies we've been, we've been trying to imp implement. And again, Insight provides a very solid foundations and evidence to support future reforms in those directions. We look forward to our third Insight as a way of looking back and demonstrating that aligning all the different health system components works, so that we are delivering a growing package to all our population and that the benefits of improving primary care are creating real improvements in halls across the whole country. Thank you very much for your attention and this opportunity. Thank you very much. I wanted uh, my colleague from the um, country office, Mina Brajevic, to introduce our next speaker, but unfortunately she's at the ministerial lunch. And I know very little, I'm afraid, Vladimir, about you. But Vladimir Obradovic is the State Secretary at the Ministry of Health in Montenegro. We're very grateful for you for stepping in and, and taking on this complicated task at short notice. If there's anything you'd like to say about yourself, please forgive me for not knowing more. <laughs> Over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be here uh, because the insight for the Montenegro has been really useful. Uh, it looks as challenging, uh, challenges of black, or objectively reminding us uh, of issue what uh, might otherwise uh, miss. It external and uh, expert uh, perspective help us to focus on those key challenges without the background noises uh, that sometimes undermines uh, the uh, important initiative when there is a cha challenge in leadership. It has been the right time allowing us as a ministry uh, to take a step back and see uh, the issue from here at the time we, uh, we are considering our new strategy and policy approach. Uh, the Montenegro insight for 2022 capture range of the health system issue, we are addressing and mark the, the challenges and change we are working toward from the progress with the universal health coverage to the limit success on the prevention and, and non-communicable -com diseases. It also highlights very clearly that we have that, that challenges uh, we need to deal with. We are aware that the decline in infant mortality is partly due to improvements uh, uh, in antenatal, perinatal, and pediatric. I know we are working hard to ensure all births are attended by skilled personnel. According to that uh, data, uh, our infant mortality is lower than EU average. But on the other hand, 
uh, our reports of death causes has not been updated since uh, 2009, and about 30% of our uh, mortality statistics is not uh, is not good. Unfortunately, death questions our our achievements. The inside summary of the financial protection challenges we faced up uh, is upsetting. Our out of the pocket payments are high, and the share of the shareholders. Uh, Holds, uh, shoulders uh, is above what we want it to be. We are on our national health account, but if, uh, if we want to take action that makes real change, we need to know what the baseline really is and what the impact of our efforts are actually have it. It's more, uh, it means more monitoring on informal payments. It demands better data. Slide two. Uh, we are working on the new national policy and the insight is really helping us to think of that issue. We have already agreed to work with WHO, Euro, and country officer immediately after the regional committee on a full assessment of our health information system. We will use this assessment to identify our gaps, to change the way we do uh, health data, and to inform a new strategy on the digital health as well. We are committed to make sure the data we collect is, is meaningful and support our e efforts to reform. We will make sure that really catch uh, things with uh, things uh, improve or don't improve so that the metrics work for us and al allowing us to modify our efforts. We will use better data to advance our quality agenda and to ensure the measure quality effectively and do better. Uh, our initiative on strengthening primary health care is a good example. Uh, is a good example. We have done a lot to boost the capacity to manage hypertension in the uh, community, but we need the better data to, uh, to secure our learning and support further improvements. We will go to finalize our health development strategy to onboard all the issues the inside flags. Montenegro is making progress to have much more to do. The insight has been really useful tool to take a deep look into what uh, is happening is not only our challenge, but improving health information is very important to understanding our actions and strengthening our performance. It's also key to particip participation in international sphere. We need better data to play a uh, part in the meeting SDG targets and to do uh, work effectively with our uh, EU partners. The inside has flagged this and give us evidence for police. We look forward to following up by working with uh, Euro and our officer on the data, and we look forward to the 2024 edition for which we will see both how far we will have moved forward and how we will manage in uh, com compare uh, compares with other peers. Thank you. My name is Viktor Olshavsky and I am the WHO representative in Tajikistan. And it's my pleasure and honor to introduce Mrs. Rano Rahimova from the Ministry of Health and Social Protection in Tajikistan. I will not insist uh, about uh, her personal uh, CV, but I would uh, say a couple of words about her work and of course the Ministry of Health and Social Protection work. When I arrived in Dushanbe, it was in the middle of the pandemic and the thing that surprised me pleasantly was exactly what we heard today in the uh, regional director's uh, report, the dual track. They were applying already the dual track. What does this mean for us? That we're focusing and giving, moving a lot of resources to the pandemic, but in the same time, they were trying to keep the, up the services, healthcare services to the maximum extent as possible, as well as discussing about the health system report, health system financing, and all the other things that in peacetime uh, would be the, their normal work. So from this perspective, uh, uh, Ms. Anna Rahimova had another uh, important job to do as a focal point of WHO. She had to also to coordinate all the development partners, and there are quite some in Tajikistan wanting to help. So dual track, resources towards the, the, the tracking the pandemic, but in the same time also coordinating all the development partners. And uh, one of the things and the achievement, she will talk about that, which will be immunization. Thank you so much for being here and accepting to uh, present uh, your case. 
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Victor. But if you allow me, I will be sorry, my presentation in Russian to be comfortable to me. First of all, uh, I would like to say uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of the Tajiga government uh, to the government of Israel uh, uh, for this uh, hospitality uh, and well as uh, for the uh, uh, partnership uh, within the uh, regional committee uh, for Europe. What can I say about uh, 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 for Republic of uh, Tajikistan. Uh, Republic of Tajikistan uh, makes every effort uh, to provide uh, uh, the widest uh, uh, possible cover coverage of the health system uh, e, uh, to increase, uh, to improve uh, our uh, uh, progress uh, uh, in terms of the uh, um, development targets uh, uh, from 2000 uh, uh, 2015 we uh, welcome the uh, review of Tajikistan uh, insight uh, which is a very useful instrument uh, which uh, helps us to uh, recover resources for the movement forward it's instru this instrument uh, uh, allows us uh, to demonstrate to the Ministry of Finance uh, uh, our successes uh, uh, in uh, uh, increasing the expenditures uh, for the primary health care uh, at the average level for the Central Asia. And it shows that we still have a, a lot uh, uh, to eliminate uh, dependence uh, from uh, informal sources uh, and to be resilient and uh, self-reliant on our uh, proper proper uh, national sources and we also talk about the lack of uh, personnel um, uh, lack of uh, doctors uh, per thousand of inhabitants uh, and uh, this uh, data shows uh, objectively um, that unfortunately uh, we still have uh, this uh, lack of uh, uh, practitioners um, uh, doctors uh, which uh, who could uh, provide uh, quality services um, uh, at the same time, uh, this uh, instrument uh, demonstrate to our development partners uh, that we really move ahead, but at the same time, we uh, do need their support uh, still in certain areas. Uh, so, uh, uh, you can see uh, the uh, uh, data on uh, tuberculosis to be treatment um, uh, uh, how uh, this uh, will increase uh, the uh, longevity of life in our country so it reflects also uh, uh, how we organize uh, the review um, of our progress and uh, reflecting our challenges that we face uh, on this way but we are very proud about our achievements uh, in uh, immunization and uh, vaccination especially in children and our reaction to the outbursts of contagious diseases 20 years ago, about 17% uh, of uh, our children didn't have any uh, possibility of uh, getting uh, vaccinated, uh, but by 2019, we ha managed to increase uh, uh, coefficient, uh, um, and uh, now 97% of all the children are protected. As uh, for the uh, rubella, uh, polio virus, uh, rubella, and uh, measles. Um, it shows our active participation in uh, providing services. 90% uh, of all the children uh, are covered by the first uh, dose, uh, and 97 are covered by the second dose. E, uh, we can uh, be proud of these uh, statistics. Um, this is also a result of our cooperation with our international partners. Um, we also cooperate uh, with uh, WHO 
and uh, a global uh, alliance uh, for vaccination uh, in order to achieve uh, uh, the objectives uh, with respect to vaccination globally. Uh, WHO uh, uh, registered our country uh, in 2002, registered our country as free from polio virus. Um, and last year, we uh, the status was confirmed. In 2016, we uh, managed uh, to eliminate uh, measles and rubella and also to uh, reduce uh, from 12% to 2% uh, the uh, 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 hepatitis B. Uh, so we are closer uh, to the target of five percent, uh, but still we have a lot of uh, a lot of things to do. Uh, that's in the instrument in the document. Uh, but uh, we also have to conduct uh, uh, companies from uh, against uh, 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 other uh, uh, diseases, uh, uh, especially among uh, children. Uh, Diphtery and others. Um, uh, uh, the next uh, steps, uh, in other words, um, uh, TB is a huge problem for our region, and this is another area of work we uh, where we uh, have a certain uh, progress. Uh, so it's a work in progress. Um, uh, we also face uh, challenges, uh, uh, which is uh, characteristic of the whole. Uh, region and uh, supported uh, by our international partners uh, uh, USAID, uh, WHO and uh, Global Alliance uh, and uh, this is a priority for our government uh, in terms of uh, the quality of uh, medicine, uh, uh, the access uh, to them and we also uh, adopted uh, the national TB program uh, which uh, allow us um, access uh, to new uh, uh, programs of treatment uh, also for the uh, uh, the diseases uh, 457 uh, 228 uh, uh, in 2014 that was the reduction of the tb level and now uh, uh, we have at the uh, average level in central asia uh, and up uh, to 68 uh, percent uh, of people are covered by the necessary treatment. And we're looking forward to the next uh, review, which will reflect uh, the progress uh, that we aimed at uh, the average level for the European region. And uh, so you see here the priorities. Um, the uh, health uh, system uh, the Ministry of Finance in this system, it's of huge importance as well as uh, the Minister of Education. And uh, this uh, instrument is very useful in terms of establishing contacts uh, with these uh, ministries and uh, our international partners. Uh, the system of healthcare, um, uh, well, uh, there are different uh, uh, problems, uh, areas, uh, uh, financing uh, vaccination, uh, personnel, medical workers uh, who carry out vaccination, uh, who organize it, etc., uh, etc. Et so we are going to use all this uh, uh, in order to increase uh, the uh, financing of the system uh, so that to uh, have uh, better results uh, even at the international um, uh, level and to reduce informal uh, elements of the system. We can show to the rest countries of the region uh, what uh, real uh, positive results we can uh, reach in uh, on this path. We also hope uh, that uh, it will help us uh, to discuss uh, measures uh, to uh, develop uh, the personnel, uh, necessarily number of personnel, uh, medical doctors, nurses, etc. And that will uh, take into account the measures of the government. And, and it will be the platform for discussion uh, uh, with those uh, who support our activities, uh, how to secure these uh, results and so that these results uh, would the strengthen the uh, potential of the primary health care and um, 
in order to provide the universal health coverage. Um, and uh, in conclusion, I would like to say is that Tajikistan is uh, proud of uh, the results uh, that we managed to cure uh, in different areas, including uh, polio. Uh, and um, uh, the most important thing now is to maintain all this and to move forward. Um, this particular instrument shows our results, our progress, uh, which we share with our partners. Uh, and we're looking forward uh, for the next regional committee so that uh, we would uh, prove uh, yet uh, uh, another the success of our programs uh, and nas our national achievements. Um, Joseph Figueras to lead that discussion, uh, who is uh, not only the director, but actually the founder of the famous observatory on health and uh, health systems, and uh, that uh, WHO is so proudly to partner with. And so you are, you are the father uh, also somewhat of the original series of country health profiles uh, for the EU countries, and now you've been masterminding that series, and so you're best suited to moderate a brief discussion. Over Thank you here. very much, Gundo, for an excellent uh, moderation. The father and the mother here is Susie Lasso, and Susie is the father and the mother of this new series, uh, together with Bernd Reichel, who couldn't be here. They worked really hard, and many colleagues in member states. So thank you very much to all of them at the observatory, at Double Joe, at your departments, uh, David and Barcelona. Listen, we have a hard, a hard close. And and disastrous moderating, I love to speak, you know. So uh, we have a hard close in seven minutes. So we have to be really, really disciplined starting with myself. The question to you is, have you got it? Are you happy with it? Is it possible in 30 minutes and four or five minutes, some a bit more, some less, to understand? Actually, I'm, I know about your countries, but I understood. I know about Israel, but I understood quite a lot about Israel. I understood about the coverage issues. I understood about the expenditure. I understood your worries about voluntary insurance. I understood that Georgia is doing much better now with the area of access and so on. Certainly using that for AMR is fundamental. Best practice. Why are some countries are managing to reduce antibiotic use and others are not doing that? I think it's beautiful when we use these profiles to, to focus in one or two important areas. Great developments in Montenegro, but I'm really grateful that you said, well, and the data, can we believe the data? We need to strengthen the data. A, sto a, strong, a strong reminder to us, to you in WHO as well, David, where are you, David? That we need to continue working on that strongly and definitely lots of improvements in Tajik in terms of immunization. I said I wouldn't speak and I end up speaking. So what I'd like to hear now is how wonderful are these series. I want to hear how you want to encourage WHO and the observatory to do them, contribute with funding if needed, but more importantly, really how you're going to use those. Uh, I, I was hoping that UFA would say something, IFA uh, would say something. These are organizations that work with member states across. And particularly, I wanted as well, <laughs> I had you as well in mind, but I wanted, I'm going to prioritize perhaps the World Bank because the World Bank works in that area uh, very actively. And Tanya Dmitashenko was, Tanya, where are you? Yeah, here. Tanya was uh, asked whether it got 30, one minute, no more, one minute to say how wonderful are those and how maybe the bank will sponsor them. Yeah. <laughs> if you want. Very you good. I, I can be short because indeed I do agree. Uh, and uh, these are very valuable insights uh, for us as we support the client, our client countries in development of programs um, to address uh, some of the weaknesses and challenges identified. Uh, and in fact, uh, we provide support to Tajikistan as, as well as Georgia here. And, uh, and the, uh, these progress, uh, products are very complementary uh, to the analysis that the World Bank does uh, with its, uh, our client countries. Um, I also wanted to highlight the importance of the uh, comparison, um, uh, pers comparative perspective 
they uh, um, afford. And here, I think very specifically, the issue that uh, Israel has pointed out uh, on on the regulation of yeah. private insurance and how to do the stewardship from the public sector side um, to ensure that you don't have uh, you know demand driven um, supply. And this is an issue that is very present in a lot of our countries and growing. Um, so including I think Georgia has this situation as well. Um, so this is uh, very valuable to us and to our client countries. Thank you. Thanks very much. Yes, I'd like to echo that actually. I learned an awful lot about regulation of private insurance. You still have some challenges, but you've done so very well. And that's exactly what we want. Thank you, Tanya, seriously now. This is exactly what we want. We want to hear, we want to hear that it opens up time. It says, what's going on in Israel? What's going on in Tajikistan? What is that we can learn? And this is exactly what we want. I'll give three words, perhaps, but really have to be 30 seconds like uh, Twitter, okay? Because they're going to really murder me alive if we don't finish the Look, Joseph, no one can praise it as well as you can. So uh, I'll spare you the praises, but I would just like to point out to the AMR as a, as a case study. I think it's a fantastic opportunity to exchange and learn from each other and ex actually apply best practices from one country to another. I really love it as an idea. Thank you. Thanks, thanks very much from you. That was it's totally tweetable, actually. Right, so Paul will do it. He's very active on Twitter. 30 seconds. I know you. You and I like to talk for hours. Just 30 seconds. Or I'll cut you, huh? Oh, okay. Um, Jacqueline Bowman, European Association for the Study of Obesity. Health professionals, love it. Suggestions for future to build on this. Cost of inaction of uh, not taking these steps. Happy to help from an obesity perspective. Secondly, I'm um, really happy to see that uh, this is going outside of EU. Yeah. Um, really important. We're in 36 countries. Happy, including all of the ones uh, uh, up on the stage today. That's my 30 seconds. Perfect. We work as well with the OECD for the European Commission, European Union, to do the profiles there. And we like to have the whole region together, which I think is excellent. There's one final 30 seconds only. I have another one over there. I have another one over there, and then you, but really very short. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. I, uh, I have a question. Actually, two questions. It's for sure useful. I'm Henrik Kachatrian from WHO Armenia Country Office, and uh, I was involved in the reviewing the draft for Armenia as well. Question number one How often you are going to update uh, this? Uh, uh, things and second question do you have plans to make it uh, more uh, bigger if i say a bit detailed or it's just limited to be short thank you yeah, i'm answering on susie's behalf because i know how she thinks we work together first no First, sustainability and as, as often as possible. We all make the same mistake, right, Susie? We like very long, long uh, documents and they're not too bad. Every other year. So. Every other year. If you give us support, if the country office give us support. Now, 15 seconds. Yeah, 15 seconds. Uh, I am Marike, the director of UFA, and uh, as you know, uh, um, at UFA we are all about uh, evidence for policy making and uh, strong science. So we are very happy with these uh, profiles, also because we are looking to strengthen our membership in the eastern part of the WO uh, region. So indeed, we will use this as a tool to start discussion with our members where we can help. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. And I will summarize now the main points. Susie was asking us common understanding, comparative understanding, question mark, and understanding for need for action. I think a common understanding is there. I think we managed that 30 minutes which we've been talking about. And I'm very keen because we all been very supportive on evidence on both sides. And we can be critical, but constructive. And we can benchmark. We are allowed to benchmark, and I think that's fundamental. Member states are understanding they need benchmarking. is not threatening. Second, comparative understanding. Yes, for best action. We talked about that. For, for, for best practice, rather. But it's very important that tracking, the, the tracking change over time. It's very unfair to compare countries with different level of development. So I would really put a lot of emphasis on the trends, on the improvements. We're saying the improvements in Georgia and these countries 
are fundamental because you departed from a very complex situation and the increase of access you managed and coverage is fundamental. And importantly, of course we want longer documents, but we need that base to understand the rest. We need that core base on a regular basis to understand the rest, which is the last point. Above all, Nino was saying that Gundo totally wants that. This is for action. This is not just to have fun and teach and discuss in these meetings. This needs to trigger action, needs to trigger member states to think what we need to do about that. So that's fundamental. We need to improve data, as David was saying, and we need to focus every two years, we'll be trying to find no new areas. And most importantly, Hans is committed on that. I hope, I believe he's committed on that. And we'll be able to have those for all countries every two years. Please support us on that. Ask for the need of that and be very, very critical. Do not, do not hesitate to say this is missing, this is not good, because that's what we live out of. So thank you very much to, to Susie, my colleague, to, to Bern, to all of you for being here, and my colleagues in the, in the country department, in the, the country health service and public health department, and both your departments for, for being here. Gundo, back to you. Thank you, Joseph, for uh, excellent moderation, very speedy. And uh, yeah, there was quite something to take on in a short period of time, but thanks for playing the game. A big thanks to our panelists for being so concise and really appreciate that. And um, I think the, when we go back to the session when, when uh, our regional director Hans suggested we should develop such a series, he was really saying it is all about use at the end of the day and impact and i think this session at least confirmed for me and i will report that back that there is a shared feeling that this is indeed something that we that will be very useful for our efforts both at country level but also those of us who are representing some organizations and uh, so with that thought uh, thanks again to all of you and for hanging in and for spending your lunch break with us and now you've got exactly seven minutes left to uh, take a deep breath a coffee take a copy and uh, then we'll see you back at the plenary room. Thank you so much to all of you. Mm -hmm.